Okay, guys, thanks for coming back. Hope you had a pleasant break. I'll just ask uh, the guys behind to close the doors, please. And yeah, of course, if anyone is left out, they can, they can come in. Next up is Alison from NVIDIA. Unfortunately, she was in the last minute prevented from joining us on stage, but thanks, from, thanks to our friends from Production Pool, it will be as if she was here. Alison, take it up. Thank you, thanks for the intro and uh, thanks for tuning in. So um, yeah, the Metaverse um, web conferencing. So let's, let's get started. So firstly, I've been saying this for months. Um, so to, to get everybody onto the same page, NVIDIA started out making graphics chips for gaming and it's still a massive part of our business. So we're uniquely positioned for this full circle that we're seeing today uh, with simulation, with digital twinning and virtual worlds. And they are the same thing. This is a drawing uh, by my son, Ben, um, when he was, uh, he would have been 13 then. Um, and back then he was a massive, huge fan of Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed. Now the original game of Assassin's Creed took over three years to develop. So I want to be clear um, from the start on development time, that the time that it takes to, to create complex virtual worlds and you know these kind of world games or world authoring, um, but also physically accurate virtual worlds. Um, there is a huge amount of development going on in virtual physics. Um, so rigid body simulation, soft body, uh, virtual cameras, self calibration of those cameras, tracking force fields or what's called sign distance field collision detection. Um, and it's all very important aspects of intricate simulation. And that precision is absolutely required for industrial twins along with artificial intelligence, rendering, of course, um, but real-time synchronization with all of the processes in the given environments, including us. Certainly, we are approaching human-scale complexity, but don't confuse that with human-scale intelligence. We're seeing vast growth in, for example, on the right, the, the growth in complexity and ability of natural language processing, especially now with transformers, 100 trillion parameter models. Now compare that to our own brain that has 125 trillion synapses. And we can train an AI system today to learn almost anything. The capability and the speed of progress of AI is astonishing. Um, as our generative models, so the capability for neural graphics, uh, creating objects for, for scenes, for simulations with AI, diffusion models, where you simply type a description and the model creates its own vision um, of, of what it believes that image should look like. But as I said, don't confuse this with intelligence. On the left is a drawing um, by Kajal done in 1885 of the dog's neural olfactory system, so its smelling ability. On the right, the Salk Institute, so this is 2016 work where they're reconstructing brain tissue in the hippocampus um, to study the sizes of our synapses. And the work showed that we have far greater capacity to store information than previously thought. Um, although we understand a lot about neuroscience today, we are nowhere near being able to simulate human level intelligence. But that does not mean that we don't have some pretty spectacular capability already, including the metaverse and using the metaverse to design, to prototype and to increase efficiency at almost zero cost while lowering carbon footprint. And at NVIDIA, we always strive to be sustainable. Our Earth 2 initiative will ultimately combine a powerful AI supercomputer with state-of-the-art software, allowing fast iterative modeling for climate and extreme weather science, and um, shown of course via a physically accurate high fidelity 
an ultra high resolution replica of Earth continuously predicting events at global, regional and local scale. So assisting with mitigation and their adaptation strategies for climate change. While all that compute is taking place, um, we must also ensure it's using the least amount of energy to get the results we need. So we're lowering footprint in data sensors with liquid cooled GPUs and highly efficient mathematics. Um, work also with Siemens, um, for example, enables anyone to build real time, full design for fidelity, AI accelerated digital twins, which will ultimately bring vastly improved operational efficiency and productivity everywhere. And with our latest silicon, Hopper, we also bring this, 8-bit floating point precision. This is joint work from ourselves, ARM and Intel, halving the carbon footprint of training AI systems, also reducing memory usage, um, especially with transformer networks. Uh, and it's natively implemented in Hooper, uh, in, in Hopper, sorry. And as Hopper is more widely adopted, the carbon footprint lowers even more. Even in games where AI is actually revolutionizing character intelligence, the game learns with you while you play, you're feeding the AI system, which is creating customized and personal content on a moment to moment basis. So truly intelligent NPCs who learn entire repertoires of emotions, gestures, and conversations um, and make playing the game more enjoyable for you. So we're helping enable social and industrial virtual reality. So AI connected um, and all connected 3D extensions of our physical world, physically accurate. So obeying the laws of physics, indistinguishable from the real world at the mathematical level and at the visual le level. Um, in fact, we designed our HQ in, in Santa Clara, California, virtually, um, and, and many of our internal systems for security, ID, even parking, are all synced with the virtual HQ, Endeavour on the left and Voyager on the right. So physically accurate, perfectly synchronised, AI everywhere, and able to connect to everywhere. And that's our offering, and we call it Omniverse. It's available in the cloud or run on on-premise hardware, what we call OBX, with our ray tracing um, capable GPUs. Omniverse is actually purpose built for designing, publishing and experiencing metaverse applications anywhere. And we also have a fully managed service that's currently in early access if you want to try it out. Um, this is OBX and we're set up for all scales. Obviously we're, we're building Earth 2. Um, so we can provide OBX systems capable of a, a wide, wide range of visual computing workloads. For example, um, here is work with DKRZ, um, which is showing the layering required to simulate extreme weather events. I believe this is somewhere in the, um, in the Maldives and they're looking at creation of, of monsoon that they're able to pull in all of the various um, parameters and, and variables and processes, ocean, land, air, et cetera, that combine um, to be able to not only visualize, but also compute extreme weather events and prediction of extreme weather events. Today's 2D internet is built on HTML, but Omniverse, is built on USD. Imagine movies today, they're the part real world camera and part CGI. Um, USD or universal scene description allows layers upon layers of creation, editing, querying, rendering, simulation and collaboration, of course. Um, it's actually Pixar's original internal tech to describe scene data. It's a runtime system that combines a whole bunch of assets and aggregates them into a composed view, a stage of layers. And our latest graphics chip, Ada, Ada Lovelace, is there to provide a huge leap in processing and in energy efficiency. Along with all of our software, 
um, which is provided freely. So SDKs and libraries are accelerating every step of your workflow across a vast array of um, applications. Whether you're deploying on our credit card size embedded GPUs or PC um, and laptops or workstations right up to supercomputers or on any of the cloud providers, it's all the same architecture and there isn't an application really that, that we haven't worked on. But why bother? Why use Omniverse at all? So firstly, because of something called domain randomization. And um, this is very important to make artificially intelligent systems really intelligent. Let me just kick off that slide. To make it really robust to our changing dynamic world, and this is hugely important, but changing the variations of the virtual world is, is child play. As simple as setting your game environment and while it's randomly varying the scene, it's providing the system with synthetic data, automatically spawning thousands of scenes in milliseconds, providing masses of training data for your system. This lets you bootstrap, um, it lets you use the data generated during simulation before any data is available, even in the real world. Um, scene changes happen frequently in, in industry. Think of assembly lines being reconfigured or reshelving stock in, in shelves, um, um, on shelves and stores. But bootstrapping with synthetic data ensures the AI system stays robust. Um, Appearance-wise, but also um, with the uh, domain itself, for example, a self-driving car or a delivery robot dealing with different types of objects in the scene or driving in different countries, you know, on the left or, or on the right. And Omniverse has an automatic tool that generates physically accurate 3D data for you to accelerate the training and performance, um, expanding your data set for the long tail or rare events that occur, um, and also precisely annotating or labeling as it goes. And once you can generate synthetic data, it's no big step to generating entire synthetic worlds. We're currently working on terrain generation and general world authoring, um, especially for self-driving or autonomous vehicles, cars, robots, and more. So combining real world with virtual to construct the scenes, the road networks, all of the props. The second reason to use Omniverse is because AI is just code. Virtual worlds are just code, which means that you can pull in all other kinds of code, including artificial intelligence, into that virtual arena, like voice commands, NLP, um, and an, in an infinite amount of creativity and ultimately complexity. Conversational AI behaviors, uh, procedural animations, differential uh, rendering, getting closer and closer to reality, um, but also interactive um, avatars or chatbots. So here it's fully synthesized, but with text to speech, with facial animation, with hand and arm movements, subtle head and, and body motion. Um, and of course, with all of our expertise um, too on, on materials, you know, which adds to touches like the leather jacket looking like leather, um, as well as all the, the correct lighting and the um, correct shading. It's actually a highly complex workflow, but we've already written it for you. So go online to, um, to get much more information. Um, and Reva is our speech SDK. It's fully customizable. So text to speech, automatic speech recognition, translation, search, and much, much more. Um, and it's written and available now. It's also simple to pull in all other kinds of components too. We've already written and freely provide tools that automatically speed up training and prune and optimize your neural network, your trained AI system so that they run as fast as possible, as efficiently as possible, whether you're deploying them, um, um, wherever you're deploying them, whenever you deploy and to whomever needs to use it, especially if, it, if that's billions of users, um, which is actually what we do best. Um, or tools for 3D surface reconstruction. So you're computing point clouds for scene representation and um, the most efficiently. This code is already written for you. Just go to those links there. I'll put a, a copy of these slides in uh, probably on Twitter, I think. But also helping you exploit spatial sparsity. 
in 3D virtual spaces so that you can represent the real world efficiently. Um, or design the ultimate robot. This is Fraunhofer's autonomous robot in its full production facility SIM. This is not a photograph. And the link there leads to much more info in the, in the recent GTC keynote where it was highlighted. For robotics, you need our embedded hardware. This is the AGX Orin. The dev kit allows you to also emulate its other variants, NX and Nano. Um, so you prototype on the dev kit and you go to market with the module. But it's all backed up by a huge ecosystem of software that we call Jetpack. Um, the actual Jetson community is supported entirely online, so you can go to that link for everything that you need. Um, but to train those virtual robots, you need the power of reinforcement learning and the power of the virtual world to allow training of thousands of agents in parallel. Here, you've got individual agents um, who are achieving rewards for imitating human motion capture. And um, each are learning to jump and land by actuating motors in their joints. Um, while they appear to be doing the same thing, um, each is actually running a separate policy. And you can see that by the, the lone outlier at the back, um, who's um, slightly off by a few seconds compared to the others. And it's clear here the power of virtual worlds for both domain randomization and training in parallel. But ultimately deployment too, um, because that's the point, you know, down to um, specific, let me just kick this off, down to specific um, behavior scripts um, attached to each so that they behave as they should in the real world. All the while you're generating both agent behavior metadata and synthetic data for use in training. Um, we also publish vast amounts of assets already written for you, things like racks for uh, virtual warehouses and chairs and tables, you know, already written for you. You can go online for that. But even deployment on Mars. Um, this is JPL's Mars Athena testbed um, back in 2006. Today, Athena uses our embedded GPUs for testing the autonomy of the rovers, which ultimately go to Mars and in the next couple of years to the moon. Um, in fact, my focus at NVIDIA is actually deployments in space, um, things like navigation and planning, PNT, position, nav and timing, uh, fast line of sight over to the dark side of the moon, um, and lots, lots more. Our embedded GPUs have actually been in orbit for many years already. Um, this is an image from the 2020 um, FDL Frontier Development Lab Moon Challenge. Uh, where we're rendering the irradiance field around the Faustini crater, which is near the moon's south pole, uh, which is permanently in shadow. So thanks to real-time ray casting, we can now illuminate any crater. And back on Earth, we can simulate entire cities. But do go online for the full demo um, in the GTC keynote with heavy AI and charter, where they're using Omniverse to create digital twins of the 4 and 5G networks. Um, at metro and nationwide scales, and they're combining multi-billion point LIDAR scans with satellite imagery, buildings, trees, and their RF propagation model to simulate the network's performance in real time. Force Earth 2, which will allow us to predict extreme weather and other important climate impacts for better informed decisions, um, so we can be prepared for the difficulties ahead in virtual reality, in the metaverse. The capability for hundreds of subsystem digital twins predicting floods, fires, agricultural output, water availability, um, all with trustworthy results will be profound. Um, and that's because of software. You know, We've learned that speed changes everything. GPUs enable us to convert data into lightning fast inference models that we can interact with in real time. Our forecast net, the links there, for example, can generate a global 10-day forecast in a fraction of a second on a single GPU. That's 45,000 times faster, using 12,000 times less energy than today's models, state-of-the-art models. Um, so you have interactivity. You can explore new scenarios in minutes, not weeks, and couple together models in, in you know, a vast number of different new, new ways. 
but for DTE, Digital Twins of Earth, you will need all of these components to achieve this. And we're working on it all right now. I'm happy to answer any questions on this. Um, it's a huge topic just in itself. Earth 2 is actually a massive international effort between NVIDIA and the research community. Um, but at the same time, we also focus on deploying real world systems like self-driving cars. This is one of our fleet garages in HQ. But our virtual cars have driven millions and millions of miles in sim, in the metaverse, in um, virtual reality. This is mission critical AI where human lives are at stake. So we have to give the cars the most experience that they possibly can. And you simply can't do that in the real world alone. But it, it also must be built with safety first. So both adhering to and shaping safety standards. For autonomous vehicles. Um, you can actually go online for much more detail on our on NVIDIA Drive, um, but this is actually mostly a proprietary stack. Um, but you can get um, our safety report, for example, online. And there's actually a ton of um, different resources out there to help you on your journey into using Omniverse, and there's many different tutorials, so please get involved. Even if you're just an interested gamer, um, you already have the skills to get involved in helping society to prototype um, at almost zero cost uh, to bring efficient, optimal design to the world. Excuse me, it's a nail drink. So wrapping up, um, all of our software is uploaded um, to this repo. You can access it anytime for free. Um, please sign up to our dev zone. Um, it's our way of keeping in touch with you and keeping you up to date with everything that we're doing. Of course, it's again, it's, it's all free. And if you are a startup using our platform, using either our software or hardware, um, make sure you join Inception so that we can better support you, um, including links to, um, to VC. Um, and Please test Omniverse. Um, you can either download um, the pre-individual version um, and, um, and run it on RTX um, you know, uh, desk side desktop, or you can go online via our launchpad um, setups that are around the globe and actually test out at um, most of the scales, actually. We have um, very large OBX systems that you can uh, test with. Um, here's some recommended talks for uh, deeper dives. Um, that's all available for free on the GTC website, which was held last um, last month um, in September. I think the keynote was on the 20th. Um, so please go to that. And um, thank you very much for listening. If there's any questions, let me know.